OK, so let's crack on with the third text here, and that's going to count the number of work orders in the client over the list status that are past our target finish date, so are, are actually overdue um, the repair date that was first assigned to them. So we're going to go and create a new column, and that column is going to contain a flag that is going to be yes or no. If the work order target completion date is less than now, then it is yes. So it basically means that the work order has passed its target completion date. Otherwise, it's no, and that's going to be in the future. That target finish date is not is, is in the future, essentially. So let's go and have a quick look at some examples in here. So this one here is no. And if we scroll along here, we can see the target completion date is the 25th of September 2021. So it's firmly in the future. Let's find one that's yes, and um, we can see that this one here is the 16th of October 2020, so that is firmly in the past. So that one is yes, it is past its target finish date. So once we've got that information, we can then go and create a measure that is going to return the third text, or the third number that's going to be used in the text. So let's create a new measure and I'm just going to paste it in. Okay, so let's paste this in here. Again, there's quite a bit of code in here, but it is, I'm just change it one to a, a three. It is easy enough to explain it once we get once we get through it. So we've got some variables. We're going to capture the overall risk status, which is going to be captured there. And that's going to tell us if it's critical or severe or whatever the status is. And then for each one of these, what we're going to do is we're going to capture the number of work orders. So we're going to use this calculate, but high risk work orders past target, past target date. So we're going to calculate the number of work orders, very similar to the last one. We're going to use this calculate table, but this time we're going to calculate and count the number of work orders which have got a past target date equals yes. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing we're going to do. Um, and then we're going to go and do that for the severity five work orders, for the medium risk, and then for the low risk. So we're going to capture all that information that counts. And then we're going to do a little bit of logic here, number of work orders for risk status. And then we're just going to, depending on the risk status, we're going to return one of those variables from above, high, medium, low, and high severity. And then we're going to go and um, yeah, we're going to go and if it's blank, then we're going to return, if that value is blank, we're going to return none. Otherwise, we're going to return the number of work orders for risk status. Now, we might need to use that format as well, but let's just um, click on here and see how it works. So we've got this, none of these defects are scheduled for repair in the next seven days. I'm going to go and create a copy of this. Let's see if it works first time this time. Copy, paste, yeah, here we go. Right, and then we're going to go in to the story. And let's see, of these defects are in Batlog. Let's go and pull in the text here, because we need to have that text. To replace an eye. So one of these. Okay, so we just need to make a quick a quick modification in here so that this is uh, a formatted format and then we're gonna use that hashtag in brackets, remember to put it in brackets. And that should be us ready to go. Hopefully. Now, what I've also done, one of these, just so that we can actually make sure that we've got um, a, a number in here, because none of the actual bat work orders are in bat log. So if I go in here, we can see that both of these high risk work orders have got a target completion date in April 2021, which is in the future from today, which is January and October 2021. So I've made us just a change here for testing. So what I've done there is I've put in plus 100. 
so that the target finish date is now saying the target finish date is now plus 100 so it's in the future if it's before then and that means that one of these is now in backlog this one here is now in backlog because it's past its target finish date in terms of this slightly modified um, equation here so that is allowing us to see that um, that one of these defects is in backlog. So I'll go back and quickly change that back because we don't want that to be there forever. I just wanted to see that that was there. Um, and I'm going to go and modify that. Oh, it's not this one. Let's go in here. This target finish date and just get rid of these this 100 here. Uh, none of these are in backlog, and um, we're going to see we're going to see that here. None of these are in backlog. Okay, so that is us. We have now got ourselves in a situation where we've got the high risk work orders. Um, the fact there's two of them, we've got none of these defects are scheduled for repair in the next seven days, and we've got none of these defects are in backlog. So another little bit of testing here. I just want to see what happens when we change this overall risk status because all of these should change um, if that changes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the rules that calculate this overall risk state status so at the moment if there's any work orders in the red then they are going to basically be greater than zero work orders in red and it's going to be the overall status is going to be um, going to be red. So if I change that to greater than 10 work orders in red, then what I think it'll do is it'll say, right, okay, no, there's not greater than 10 work orders in red, but there is greater than no work orders with a high severity because there's these ones here. So now it's gone to yellow. So there are four high severity defects at the site. None of these defects are scheduled for repair in the next seven days. Three of these defects are in backlog. So it's starting to pull together each of the different figures here. So let's go and we'll change this one to be greater than 10 as well. And it should then come in with a medium. There are 280 medium work order defects. Now look, this is falling over. So this is a benefit of doing a bit of testing here is that we can actually see that we would need to make that slightly bigger because if that goes into three letters, in fact, we could even make it slightly wider. That's probably going to be fine. And we can just play with this later on and mess about with the, with the, with the formatting. 206 of these defects are in backlog. Three of these defects are scheduled for repair in the seven days, so there's not, not too many. Um, and we can see here another example for a little bit of testing has just helped us out. We just need to make that slightly bigger. Just because it's a bigger text, obviously, or, or like a, 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 a longer phrase. And then let's go back in and just double check the final one. So overall status. And we're going to say it's green if there are greater, well we know there's 285 so let's put it greater than 300 I think it'll still be yellow actually that's blank now because it's falling between the, the cracks here so we're going to put greater than 300 and put less than less than or equal to 300 yeah that will be the same so now it should say low yeah there we go there are 500 low-risk defects at the site. 21 of these defects are repair next seven days. Okay, so it's all kind of starting to kind of take shape there. And it looks as if it's returning the right values. So let's just change these back. Greater than 20 and less than 20. Okay, so that more or less brings us to the end of the first one. Now we could probably play about with the positioning here a little bit and just um, and change some of this stuff and we'll do that as we go through it. But now we've got a fully functional front page that has got the overall risk status, it's got the risk matrix and it's got these three statements here that are going to let us just provide a little bit of extra information for whoever's reading this.
Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next lesson.